I'll have more from Julian Lisa in the program about this issue, but let's catch up now with Ali Clark, Mixed Breakfast host in Adelaide, and Lisa Gollard of Adoni Media in Brisbane. Thanks both for joining us. We've got to stay on this shocking issue, and I want to bring you the latest news from Sydney because I think this is going to reverberate around the nation. That pro-Palestine rally has marched all the way through the city of Sydney and has gone to the Opera House where the sales are supposed to be reflecting Australia's solidarity with Israel. Look what the crowd chants. Shame, shame, Israel! Shame, shame, Israel! Shame, shame, Australia! Shame, shame, Australia! Shame, shame, Albert! Shame, shame, Albert! Just extraordinary. Hard to believe that's happening in our city tonight. Lisa, let me get your reaction first. Shame, shame Israel, what, for having 700 people murdered in cold blood, and yet these people also shame, shame Australia, the very country that, who's giving them this right to live a peaceful and happy life. Yeah, it's just sickening to watch. And I watched the footage from the protest last night and then again what's happening right now as we go to air. It's not the Australia that we know. And right now you have members of the Jewish community who aren't safe, don't feel safe, are being told that they're potentially not safe in their own hometown of Sydney. How is that a country that we can be proud of? You know, we're all talking about the voice and, and being, you know, it, it dividing the country. This right now is backing terrorism. It, it, it is just disgraceful and we should be hanging our heads in shame. And goodness knows if you're a member of the Jewish community tonight how you must be feeling. Or members who, are, you know, who live here in Australia but have members of their family or friends who they can't get in contact with. That's the reality of what we are seeing. And I know in your editorial, Chris, you spoke about the fact that you've had you know, streaming coming in through social media. In years gone by, we wouldn't have seen some of the images and the haunting, horrible brutality that we have been exposed to. And I think, in one way, it's a good thing that we are seeing this uncensored because too many times in newsrooms we've sat there and went, well, the general public can't cope with seeing this. And I think we need to see the horror of what is playing out. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I mean, I think you need to... It's so scary, isn't it, Ali, that our children can be exposed to this or that we have to explain it to them, but it is the very nature of these atrocities that sets it about. This is horrible, brutalised uh, inhumanity and depravity against people. This is not people, you know, armed services firing rockets back and forth at each other. I mean, just last week, Chris, we were talking about, you know, sending our children off to music festivals. I mean, you know, these people were at a festival and had men dropping from the sky in parachutes and they left hundreds dead and kidnapped women, innocents. And I guess that's what it comes down to, right? This may not have happened in a vacuum, a huge historical vacuum. Of course it hasn't. However, do you really stand with the rape and murder and pillaging and terror that has been given to women and children and innocent people. Can you really stand with that? And that is just abhorrent to see on the streets of our country. Yeah, look, I, I, you know, I love our country and I love our tolerance. I love the multicultural nature of this country and I'll get into all sorts of battles and do about uh, supporting that system in this country. And as, as Lisa said, we're going through this with the voice debate at the moment. But I find it very, very difficult to accept that my fellow citizens will go out on the streets today and condemn Israel and celebrate what's happened to Israel. And just have a look at what the New South Wales police uh, had sent out to the Jewish community. Uh, this is courtesy of the Australian newspaper. We can see here they've sent out a message, an email, warning for uh, the people of the community to stay away. They've urged them not to attend the Sydney Opera House while those sales are being let up lit up to, to show empathy with Israel, they shouldn't go there because there could be a risk to their safety. And as I showed you before, instead we have the Palestinian protesters decrying Israel going down to the Opera House. Lisa, this seems completely ass about, if you'll excuse that expression. But the victims here are yep. being told it's, it, it's not safe to go out and mourn for the victims of their liberal democratic country that suffered a terrible uh, terrorist attack, yet we tolerate uh, 
protesters supporting Hamas's actions and waving the Palestinian flag. Apparently, there are unconfirmed reports that some people have been taken away by police for waving the Israeli flag. Yet we have this large protest of Palestinian flags. Well, and it's what's being screamed and chanted as well. It's repugnant that they're saying that they're cheering this on, that it brings them joy, that it's courageous, and all of those... A disgusting way to describe the horror that's being played out in Israel at the moment. But you've also got the fact that you, you, politicians need to come down... And, look, you know, Peter Dutton and Albanese, to a degree, have come down hard on this, but we can't afford to have any of our elected representatives not saying that this is just not acceptable in our country. And you've got members in that, people in that crowd who, if last night is any example, actually calling for almost a call to arms, if you like, of people to, to go out and for there to be resistance. So we don't need uh, attacks. We don't need people victimised in this country. And we've got police services around the world now, particularly in London, for example, and across Europe, where they are now having to take extra patrols into areas and, and monitor the Jewish community for their safety. That, it's that extraordinary. is where we are at, not just here in Australia, but around the world at the moment. And I've just got some video that's just come in from Ben Long Point from the Sydney Opera House. No, actually, I think this might have been for further uptown where police are removing somebody for having an Israeli flag. What's he being arrested for? I've got nothing wrong. Tell us what he's being arrested for. What just tell me what I've done. Why is it? OK, that uh, vision just in. Now, Ali, uh, that's up at Town Hall. That's where the Palestinian rally was starting. I would be very surprised if that man arrest man's arrested. I would expect police are taking him away for his own safety to make sure that he is not victimised by anyone there or he's not stirring up any trouble. But this is, this, this is just unspeakable to have this sort of division in our country. I think Lisa hit it on the head. I think you did too, Chris, in your editorial. You know, when you see a woman being dragged out the back of a four-wheel drive, having soiled herself because she's so terrified, when you see that daughter being dragged away on the back of a bike and hear her father just in so much grief because he couldn't protect her, how can you possibly, as a human being, how can you possibly think that is a justified means to the end? And we'll find out, no doubt, what that particular instance was with that man being taken away. But for it to be anything but sympathy for those families, those communities and the people who are feeling this the most is just mind-blowing to me and it shouldn't be in this country that we all love. It is just terrible. Now, I do need to find time to squeeze in some other issues tonight, so just one more for both of you before we go. I'll get your views on The Voice. Just have a look at this vandalism that's occurred on a New South Wales highway where 110 kilometre signs have been, with one deft a stroke of paint turned into no sign. So this is the unofficial protest by no campaigners. But as we have a look at uh, that vision, I wonder if each of you could uh, tell us how you see this going, because all the polling suggests, us, uh, suggests to us it's going down, Lisa. Well, interestingly enough, I spoke to a friend who, of all places, lives in Thailand, and he said he went out to vote today, and he said there was probably 50 people there lined up, and he reckons about 95% of them were voting no. So, and the conversations he was overhearing was that this is the most important vote that this country has ever faced. So it's, uh, it's not just here in Australia, but it's, it's the expats as well. Yeah, I think it's a very important vote, but uh, two of the polls have got the yes uh, case lifting a little, Ali, but uh, news polls got it going down, but none of them show it being within reach. No, I mean, the horse is bolted, right? I mean, no matter where you're sitting on, those polls seem to be very, very damning. And it has just divided everybody. I mean, kudos to those graffiti artists that turn the 110 sign into the no, because most graffiti I can't even understand when you see most of the tags. <laughs> yeah. but, but, you know, when you see, you know, people having their placards ripped down, when you see the division of uh, neighbour versus neighbour, absolutely, people can have their own opinion. But when it turns into something that has become Coming increasingly nasty, as we've seen led by some of our leaders. It's just such a sad indictment of where we are as a country that we can't have genuine, well-educated, well-thought-out discussions where people can actually make their mind in a factual-based environment.